Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Happy holiday. If you're new here, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for your support and thank you so much for supporting me in this my journey from zero subscriber back in March to almost 3,000. Or by now it might have been 3,000 for December 2020. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for watching my video. Thank you for watching me rambles. Thank you for being there and being interested in me and my life and my watching my video, watching me blabbing about perfume, watching my addiction, going nuts of purchasing perfume and even buying perfume per my recommendation. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your support. Thank you, thank you. So this is such a good year for me, even though it's also not such a good year because I'm going through divorce and life is kind of hard. So this is, might be a negative video. I'm not sure. I'm trying to make it positive, guys. Okay, so worst purchases of 2020. This video is going to be negative by nature, but I will try to make it positive as possible. So these are the perfume that I actually bought. Although I need to mention Mokalat again, but then <laughs> Abby from Abby with Loves so was gonna make me, oh, my kids are home. Okay guys, sorry I got interrupted because my kids came home from their dad. So yeah, so 10 perfume that didn't work out for me. Number one, I'm watch Lilac Love. I declutter it as soon as I got it. The more I think about it, it's a super long lasting, quite a unique take of perfume, very different than what's in the mass market. It actually smells rather vintagey. The opening smells like white shoulders where it has a very screechy, loud white floral, including lilac, jasmine, it's a lot of different white screeching white floral that's kind of headache inducing. And on top of that, the dry down is also extremely, extremely powdery. This is like a legit powder. I'm not a big fan of it. I could stand like musk, musky powderiness, like Narciso that I love. But the powder here is really intense. It's very, very powdery. It's not something that they gravitate towards. And it also has this musk, like metallic musk. Um, so yeah, that is the first perfume, the first niche, rather expensive perfume that I bought that I couldn't keep right away. So yeah, so that unfortunately didn't stay. So that is number one of the top 10 perfume that I decluttered. Number two is Mancera Wild Python. I bought this because I've been obsessed with tuberose lately. I love bubblegummy tuberose. I love creamy creamy tuberose but mancera wild python it's actually a dupe for killian good girl gone bad unfortunately that tuberose is a little bit green it's a little bit too i don't know it's a little bit too green i have not been a big fan of green note in general but i realized that the green that i really can't stand is actually a green tuberose so yeah unfortunately that one doesn't stay there's no sweetness to it it smells like as if you take velvet vanilla, it has angelica, if you take velvet vanilla and then remove any of the sweetness. So it's a little bit bubblegummy, but there's no sweetness at all. So yeah, I, I, I'm not a big fan. If you like Mancera velvet vanilla and then you like a little bit green, then that might be a good one for you. But unfortunately, that doesn't work out for me. Number three is Nirvana bourbon. That is a dupe for Guerlain Spiritus Double Vigny, which I really, really enjoy. But unfortunately, it's like taking the Double Vigny, remove all the booziness factor to it. So on my skin, it actually smells quite good. It's like cedar and vanilla. On my skin, unfortunately, it turns out rather like a cigarette butt. Like if you take a, a box of Marble Light and just like, open the box and breathe to it that's what it smells like so it smells like a cigarette box to me so unfortunately i don't want to keep that uh, that one also doesn't last a long time lasts about four hours and it doesn't project much it's decent but the projection 
quickly dies down. It's a rather affordable, but it's not really if you think about it based on the performance. So I, um, unfortunately, that doesn't work out for me. Number four, Alien Oud Majestic. So I've been a big fan of Alien. I love Alien or Sublime. I love Alien Essence Absolute. So I watched Mila LeBlanc and then she talked about how Alien Oud is good. Unfortunately on me, it smells rather like indolic. The Oud is a little bit indolic. It smells like um, going to the zoo where there's, you know, animal that eat hay. And yeah, it was like going to that establishment. There's just like poopy scent that I don't like. So, and then add jasmine. So it's like 50% indolic oud and 50% alien jasmine. So I'd love it. I love alien jasmine, especially the all sublime and alien essence absolute. Unfortunately, alien oud majestic did not work out for me. Number five, Shalimar Souffle Intense. This is like, <laughs> I watch a lot of people like this. Apparently that's the best Shalimar girl on. And I don't know, I, as a perfume obsessed, like as a perfume reviewer, I feel like obligated of owning a girl on Shalimar. And because of that, I bought the most popular one, the one that I thought I would enjoy most because there's more benzoin and vanilla. Unfortunately, the lemon there it act like just a, a top note and then the dry down, the benzoin is extremely, extremely thick. It smells like a stale air with a little bit of powderiness and Guerlain DNA. And the whole thing has this very melancholia vibe. It, it doesn't work well for me. When I put it on, it puts me in a rather mel melancholia mood that I don't enjoy, you know. I want my perfume to bring me good mood. I want my perfume to make me smell good. I don't want a perfume that put me to a confused state of mind and depression, you know. So because of that, that one doesn't stay. Number six, Lancome La Vie et Belle. I tried this in store I wasn't a big fan of it and then I forgot how it smells like and I bought it um, I kept it and I tried to use it up but the patchouli there is too much and it's too strong of a perfume I know I'm an oversprayer if you enjoy La Vie Belle I understand because you don't overspray probably like you need two spray to four spray tops this one for some reason I tend to overspray and every time I put it on it's a regret it's for sure a wintry scent and I live in a hot and humid place. Because of that, I prefer a scent that I could wear a lot more throughout the year, something more versatile. So yeah, that didn't work out for me. Yeah, the patchouli is too much, too much patchouli. And it's a little bit too sweet for my liking too. All right, number seven. This is a disappointment. Um, I really, really want to love it. Fun Creep and Arpel Orchid Evening. The scent is really nice, but the projection is almost zero. Longevity is decent. It lasts about eight hours, but has zero projection. If you wash your hand with the soap and then rinse it off, that residue of soap smell is 10 times more than Orchid Evony. So I tried it to like it because I really, really want to own it, you know. As a perfume reviewer, I feel like a lot of people have Fun Cliff Arpel Orchid Epiphany. I want to be part of the club and I want to own it too. But unfortunately, it doesn't work. As soon as I spray it, I like disappeared. Um, even Fab Delicious smells like 20 times stronger than Orchid Epiphany. It's a nice scent. I could see on certain profession, if you're like a nurse or a doctor, if you are working in an environment where you should not be wearing perfume, that might be attractive because you feel like you're spraying something and you put it on and it doesn't overpower. It's a more like a skin scent. But to be honest, you could use like even Philosophy brand, which is way, way, way cheaper. For the price for Orchid Evany, I don't think it's worth it. So unfortunately that one left my collection. It didn't even stay long at all. So the next one is not known a lot. This is a Mirabelle Ficanto by Tiziana Terenzi. This one is an okay one. It actually smells like Ani plus milk. Or a subscriber said that it smells like eggnog with wintery scent in the background. It has this like thick vapor ups vibe in the background. So think about it, it's like borderline gourmand, but it has this like strong medicinal thick vapor ups in the background. In a way, it's like mixing milk and thick vapor ups. There's something off in it, 
like if you look at the notes it's such a beautiful beautiful notes there's like milk vanilla there's a lot of other things i don't remember on top of my head but for sure when you look at the note it's like must buy like this looks so attractive even the review looks good like okay this one smells like ani some people say it smells like lira so think of if you have lira like that bourbon vanilla and then add fake vapor ups and add milk think about milk combined with fake vapor ups that just doesn't go along well so unfortunately that didn't stay even though i really really want to love it if that one's not bad i just think that if you want to buy that might as well buy ani or lira that's much 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 better in my opinion the next one is zadik for Luther. this is her this was a love as first sniff but then after watching perfume realm and amy loves perfume they mentioned that this perfume smells like puke and that sandalwood the super deep dry down is super duper sharp and synthetic that's like definition of javanol like molecule of four it's a big no-no i'm not a big fan of synthetic wood at all it's so sharp that it almost smells like a public toilet in asia <laughs> sorry yeah so unfortunately that didn't work out the last one but not least there are two perfume in here this is from dolce gabbana one of them is dolce garden and dolce gabbana the only one intense so Dolce Garden is a really nice like tropical floral with the coconut milk like the notes are so attractive it's like a gourmand but it's super extremely sweet it has this like coconut and the coconut here is not a creamy coconut it's a little bit rather coarse coconut think of like if you buy the chocolate from Walmart it has that like coconut pulp but add a lot of sugar so it makes it super sweet and it has that like pulpy coconut cream so it sounds good and I want to like it a lot but unfortunately when I put it on something doesn't get along with my skin chemistry it smells too synthetic the opening it's a little bit too sweet sickeningly sweet and the creamy coconut doesn't come across as like creamy it smells rather cheap in my opinion like at least that's how it works like my skin chemistry i know that this is a super popular dna and an absolute which i love she mentioned this perfume this is like one of her easy reach and i really really want to love it but unfortunately it didn't work out for me and the last one but not least number 10 dolce gabbana the only one intense actually do enjoy this but it has a green apple note and for some reason green apple doesn't work out for me and it also has the same coconut in Dolce Garden and I don't like that coconut I love coconut but I don't like the coconut in Dolce Gabbana for some reason so from now on going forward if I see a coconut note in Dolce Gabbana I'll be much more wary about it I probably won't try to blind buy right away I want to smell it all right anyway thank you so much guys so those are the 10 or 11 perfume in 2020 that didn't work out for me and if you haven't tried any of this and wanting to buy it just take my opinion with a grain of salt please sample and don't let my opinion deter you from buying you know because everyone's different all right thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one bye bye